three years ago, I set out to construct the most powerful nootropic stack for focus, motivation, and sheer cognitive horsepower. I logged hundreds of hours, sampled endless amounts of cognitive performance chemicals, and ran beta tests with soldiers from the United States Army. And after massive experimentation and ruthless trial and error, my work had finally paid off. I found what I was looking for. A lot of people have problems getting themselves to do work. This is why we built the Cortex stack. You know, we essentially built a stack to have somebody administer it 30, 40 minutes later, however long, to, uh, long it takes for them to metabolize it, cue their brain into getting to a place where they're motivated, they have the functional energy to work. I mean, that's why folks don't, I mean, they're not motivated, they don't have the energy to do it, they don't have the cognitive power to do it, the horsepower, and they have the will and the drive to sit down and work for a long period of time. I mean, you feel noticeably stimulated and noticeably locked in, a honed in feeling that you can sit down and do work. That's why what we targeted in building the Cortex stack. Secure bottle at the livecortex.com website. Again, livecortex.com. Livecortex.com for what's being called the only nootropic stack, pre-made stack that actually works. When I try to shoot, doesn't have it land on the couch. It's probably going to fall on the ground. It landed on the couch, okay. Uh, biohacking. And three times that biohacking bit me and went totally wrong. Biohacking is very attractive. People realize these days that you know, they're, they, while a GP general practitioner can help them diagnose certain things, a lot of your health is in your hands these days, frankly. Uh, the medical establishment is great for diagnosing things. They're great for giving you symptom mitigators to mitigate some of your symptoms. But ultimately, uh, like, I mean, what does everyone say? What is the root cause? What is the underlying cause? What is the functional cause? You gotta figure that out. There are such doctors that are out there that think that way, think in a systems way to address things, and they're called functional medicine doctors. And they used to be called quacks, just like everything else it's not mainstream yet. But now they're getting a lot more attention and things that they hypothesize about like leaky gut 10 years ago are now in the literature and folks are starting to look at it like, oh, maybe they were right. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> they think about things the right way in terms of systems and fixing the root function. Um, that's kind of how biohackers think. You know, for us, it's like attractive to think about how we can fix particular problems that doctors can't. And how, I think it's important that as we all age and run into health problems as we age or whatever issues we might have relating to health as we age, it's important and it's attractive to us and it's cool to know how to manipulate the body systems in a way that promote health, et cetera. Uh, there are very many sort of uh, um, uh, idolized biohackers, Dave Asprey, Tim Ferriss, Ben Greenfield, others, Abel James, all these other people out there. And so it's become this whole thing where people are into biohacking. And I think it's really great. I think people should experiment very wisely, but ultimately, I mean, I've been able to solve lots of problems. GPs and the medical establishment have not been able to solve through understanding biohacking. And then you sit down with somebody who has got like a, a, a health problem that you've never had before, but since you've done so much reading, you understand physiology to such an extent through reading a whole lot and experimenting on yourself, you like understand what they're you know, what the mechanism is for their problem. They're like, yeah, I think it's related to my like immune system attacking my thyroid gland. And you're like, oh, Hashimoto's disease. And they're like, yeah, how did you know that? Well, I'm a biohacker, I understand these things. I, I read about it, I'm obsessed with it. That's how I am, I'm just obsessed with biohacking. But it can go terribly wrong in a lot of cases. And here are three cases where it went totally wrong with me. Number one, Huberzine A. Huberzine A is a smart drug that uh, inhibits an enzyme called acetylcholine esterase. Acetylcholine esterase breaks down and recycles acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter in your brain. So it keeps it from overflowing and keeps it from you having too much of it in your brain. Well, if you inhibit that enzyme, you end up having a lot of acetylcholine in your brain. That can be a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing to a certain extent, and then a bad thing when it gets too much. Acetylcholine is a focused neurotransmitter, uh, among other things. Muscular contraction, muscular, neuromuscular, interaction between acetylcholine and your muscles take place too. You burn a lot of acetylcholine when you run and lift weights. Well, um, the standard dosage for Huberzine A, this smart drug, that's an acetylcholine esterase inhibitor that promotes more acetylcholine in the brain, is maximally 400 micrograms and probably should be about 400 to 200 micrograms. Well, in the beginning of my smart drug days, I didn't take it seriously enough, the sort of recommended dosing, and I took I don't know what it was to eyeball it, which is stupid, purely stupid. 
is probably around 1500 micrograms and the highest tolerable dose is like 400 micrograms. I put it in a water cap, like a cap of a water bottle, put some water in it and swallowed it down. It was stupid. 20 minutes later, I started getting incredible brain function. I was like, wow, this is working, holy crap. But then short time after that, I started feeling super sick. My stomach started feeling super bad. It was like, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> and then I, then I just threw up for four or five hours. I couldn't move. My brain was still working great but I couldn't move. I felt so sludgy and slow. My body felt slow. I was like in this weird state. I couldn't even open my eyes. It hurt. The room was spinning. It was terrible. I mean, it felt like I had been poisoned effectively. Um, it lasted until about nine o'clock the next morning. I didn't sleep the entire night and it was terrible. And after that, I learned my lesson. I never touched Shubrazine again above 80 microgram doses. I just never you know, did again. I was like super scared even to take 40 micrograms the next time. It worked out fine because it was the right dose. It was months later and that was it. So that's number one. Uh, number two, olive leaf extract. I got Epstein-Barr virus in 2015. It's caused a myriad of other additional health problems and that is a virus. One of the most powerful antiviral herbs that isn't a drug is olive leaf extract. It's got this compound called olopropin, oleopropin, something to that effect. Very powerful, known for ages and ages and ages. Folks 10,000 years ago used it on viruses and healed themselves. Well, I took too much of it, you know, trying to, uh, you know, trying to get my viral load down from Epstein virus in my blood. And what I think happened is I induced this thing called the Herxheimer response. Herxheimer response is essentially you're detoxing way too fast for the liver and the rest of your body to deal with it. So it puts you in a place where you've got terrible symptoms. You feel terrible, you're totally tired, totally run down. You know, you might have rapid heartbeat. You just feel like something crazy is going on. You feel like total trash, like flu times six or seven, consistently for days. That happened to me taking olive leaf extract. So, you know, I, I, I titrated the dose down to a place where I was able to tolerate it and that has consistently been helping me in, in getting the Epstein-Barr virus under control. So I essentially OD'd on, <laughs> on uh, uh, olive leaf extract. It was very terrible. That's biohacking mistake number two. Number three, similar situation, trying to control the Epstein-Barr virus um, was high dose vitamin C, pretty high dose vitamin C for me in a super bioavailable form because it had bioflavonoids in it which make it, you know, uh, it hit you faster or absorb faster. It took 10 grams, capsule form. It was just capsule powder form right away. I didn't really eat much that day of vitamin C. Prior to that, I've actually taken much more vitamin C, but it was with rose hips and it was in a, like, I think, a, uh, what do they call that? Like where it absorbs, takes a long time to absorb, I forget, but it took like a longer time to absorb. It sort of, uh, it was st uh, staggering in, um, in uh, absorption and instead of being linear. Um, so that was a lot better. And I was, mm, I had some bowel issues, but I was mostly fine. But this time, it was basically terrible. In about an hour, I felt like, first I felt like what seemed to be my liver on my right side here, kind of like below my chest, doing something. It was just like moving. I felt like there was liquid going through it. It was gurgling it was, and it was quick. It was just this crazy, and it, and it kept happening. It was, it was just like moving quickly. Something was happening. Vitamin C is a massive antioxidant. So possibly I was just detoxing crazy. Like my just body went into this hyper detox mode. And at the time though, um, I, I mean, it was entirely too much for me. I got massive rapid heartbeat. It was just like, boom, 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 boom. I was super dizzy. I had to sit down. I was like, dude, I'm gonna pass out. And every time like I would move or do something, I, I would feel like I was gonna pass out. I had to like breathe heavy, walk around to prevent myself from passing out. I was like, this is terrible. I was scared, basically. And then the only thing the only thing that kept me from like not passing out was I had some Gatorade and I had a soft pretzel. And I was like eating the soft pretzel, like wow, that makes me feel better for two minutes, holy shit. And now drinking the Gatorade makes me feel a little better for two minutes. And I just kept doing it until I finally got out of it. And I was like, okay, wow, I'm okay, I'll never do that again. So that's the three things. I have many, many other instances of biohacking gone completely wrong. And it's important to say, biohacking is attractive, it's cool, people like it. But in the end, it is, uh, if you are not careful and if you are not judicious, you can take too much of one thing, you try to experiment to try to fix a problem and something goes completely wrong 
And you can end up in those situations or worse, end up in the hospital, end up causing some sort of damage that's permanent or semi-permanent or something else you know, equally uh, crazy. So you wanna be extremely careful when you're biohacking. You know, understand that you are affecting systems of the body, no question about it. And always you know, sort of have a strategy of starting very low on doses and then kind of working your way up to see what you can tolerate and doing a hell of a lot of research before you even do anything. Thanks for watching.